LTE High a new solution to future wireless mobile broadband challenges and requirements. It is understood that global mobile data traffic will continue to increase in the future, such that current standards will be insufficient by 2020. Hence it will be tough to ensure mobile networks remain as fast and efficient they are today. There this article identify the challenges that will arise in future mobile broadband systems and proposes new solutions on how to tackle these challenges in order to improve the user experience on future networks. So what are the future challenges? These five challenges highlighted by the article are Limited data rates, spectrum limits, varied deployment types, cost, and lastly high quality of service. Studies show that mobile internet traffic will on average, double every year by 2020. Thus addressing this issue concern is the first and main challenge of mobile broadband. Current spectrum limits in the 800 MHz to 3 GHz is congested with increasing usage. Thus we need to look upwards at higher frequency bands, such as the 3.5 GHz to 5 GHz range. As more people use cellular systems in their daily lives, future mobile broadband will need to be flexible enough to handle ever-evolving tasks, such as in restaurants, or even on the go. As more network nodes are required to solve the challenges highlighted, cost of installing and maintenance will be very expensive. Next challenge will be to reduce this cost as much as possible. Finally is the need for improving quality of service in microcells, as current system evolves past the macrocells of the present. As such, LTE High aims to solve these challenges through the following key technologies. First, spectral efficiency enhancements can be achieved in LTE High as the small cell's coverage is limited and less user needed to support. This means that data within cell is able to propagate better relative to the environment. 256 QAM is achievable due to increase in SNR, which means 4 times the symbol can be carried compared to 64 CAM, LTE highest modulation order. The increase in signal-to-noise ratio and limited users within the small cell reduces the number of reference signals needed to control the network quality. Thus this will increase the bandwidth available for actual data packets. Next, Dynamic TDD Uplink Downlink Configuration TDD works by allowing nodes to send data to the terminal on a specific time slot. With this nature Dynamic TDD allows the terminal to adjust its uplink and downlink transmission ratio based on short-term traffic load. If several isolated small cells are nearby using different configuration, they are able to merge and form a large coverage through cell clustering to reduce cell degradation. A cell to be defined as isolated is determined by the interference from other cells and comparing the result with each other. Inter-ENB carrier aggregation can be used to boost data bandwidth within an limited area. This works by deploying a small cell with higher frequency into a macro cell to boost the traffic capability. Independent processes are used to communicate and data radio bearer with QoS used to determine where the traffic will direct to. Efficient system operation allow capacity boost and save power. Firstly, capacity boot can be achieved by splitting cell into smaller cell, which means decreasing users in a cell, and thus increasing the potential for traffic offloading on network. Power efficient using small cell can be achieved by 1. Completely switch off the cell when not in use, 2. Minimize the transmission of always on signals, and 3. Use one carrier when traffic load is light. All are implemented through mechanisms to allow dynamic yet efficient adjustments. Next we will look at LTE high comparison to Wi-Fi. We shall look at implementation differences at physical layer, media control, mobility, security and maturity. First is the physical layer. LTE High uses band ranging from 3.4 to 3.8 GHz while Wi-Fi uses 2.4 and 5 GHz. LTE HI uses OFDM, MIMO and link adaptation like Wi-Fi and added an interference cancellation receiver. After which we'll look at mobility, LTE High supports smooth and seamless mobility unlike Wi-Fi which is nomadic. In media control, LTE High manages radio resources via a centralized scheduler whereas Wi-Fi adopts CSMA slash CA. In terms of security LTEH I have stronger security schemes unlike Wi-Fi which supports WEP and WPA encryption. Lastly, Wi-Fi has been around over 10 years whereas LTE only started in 2009. In conclusion, adapting to the increasing data rate in networks has been identified as the most important issue. Through efficient spectrum use, LTE High is able to accomplish a high data rate and cost enhancements to lower the cost of operating an LTE High network. Hence, it is concluded that LTE High would be an economical and affordable solution as a future wireless broadband system.